All right, so for recording purposes, this class is going to be on the tools that I use and why and how I use them um, as I chart them and show you uh, how I chart with them and why I chart with uh, the tools that I use the way that I do. Um, and yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Don't feel like you're interrupting at all. Um, it's best to just, you know, always, hey, real quick, I got a question, you know, and don't let that slide by. Uh, let me just go in the chat real quick and see if there was any other questions. What about logging out and then back in Bernice? I think that's your name. I don't know. BLJ. Man, that's a good one. Uh, Erica, try to log out and log back in. Oh, okay. I had it right. Cool. Bad, bad, bad. Click on the, oh, dang, I wasn't looking at it. Click on the hexagon sign. It should be in there. Oh yeah, in the settings we tried it. It wasn't. Uh, it was missing that part. Oh, therapy assists people issues or no therapy assists people issues or life challenges. A therapist is more formal than a life court a life coach. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I get where you're coming from. Uh, Vivian, Miss Vivian. Um, I love that name. Uh, Miss Vivian. Uh. What I would say is with this individual, um, she can do other things as well. You know, she she can be a life coach if uh if that's something that you're looking for and stuff of that nature. Um, but I I utilize it for my own personal things and I also utilize it for like trading and like getting my head back in the game when I'm just going through a lot with the investment game. Uh, I actually wasn't trying. Okay, cool. We see now. All right, cool. All right, so let's get this class started. So, um, let's let's chart up spy. Let, we'll, we'll do it with spy, right? All right. So first, we're gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna talk about the tools that I use and how I utilize them, right? So one one of the first tools that I used was a trend line. I use I wouldn't say majority of these. I only use some of them and I only use them for um, particular reasons. So a trend line is going, to, I am going to utilize a trend line for exactly what it is. It's to create a trend, right? Um, when I first started trading, I would grab, you know, the the high and I would do like a trend just like this, like anybody would, right? Because that's what, that's how you're seeing it and stuff of that nature. As I grew as a trader, I stopped doing that, right? I also went from the wig to the wig, right? Things of that nature, like just trying to see if it'll break out of there. Um, and I started to run into things where I started to over, uh, understand that, um, that those are highs, right? And it's before I started even understanding the shadows. Some people call them shadows. Some people call them wicks, right? Even before I started to understand that these were liquidity areas and as well as entry points and targets, um, I just thought like, hey, that's the high, that's what I'm looking to break and things of that nature, but that's going to be your resistance, right? That's like the highest resistance. I'll just use this candle right here. This You have a resistance here and you have also have a resistance here, right? This is more so of a rejection area, right? Where prices is, 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 is being hard-headed, right? For layman's terms, it's being hard-headed and not wanting to stay above 42370, right? So since we and it's really 42371, right? Since we since we can identify with that, we now know that that's a that's that's a resistance, but it's more so a rejection zone. It still correlates with resistance. The ultimate resistance is going to be right here, right? Um and you can see how it's flirting with it trying to break that resistance, right? And then you're going to have support obviously, and then you're going to have um your bounce area, right? So that's how you can look at that as well. Um, so with me just explaining it that way, I'm going to grab my trend line and I do you utilize wicks. I'm just not going to use a high one, right? I utilize this wig. That one doesn't bother me that well, but I'm going to use that body right here, right? And I'm going to come all the way down to like that breakout, right? Right here, right? That's going to be how I draw trend lines. And we can make this a little bit longer. Uh, bring it up just a tad bit. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing while I'm bringing it up a tad bit. I just wanted to be with that, but I'm aligning it with this body to that body. That's the breakout to me, right? Everybody views it a little bit differently and that's that's completely fine, right? But to me, that's how I'm gonna view, view, uh, view and utilize a trend line 
for a breakout, right? Because I want it, I want, I can see where this area here, where there's no candlesticks, this is a consolidation area and it doesn't want to stay there that long, right? Because we can see even coming into here, you see the rejection, 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 boom, get the heck out of that area. You know what I'm saying? You can even see here, like, boom, dang, we're in that area. What's going on? What's going on? Boom, let's get out of that area. You know what I'm saying? And you can see how it just ranges just a tab in. This is a seven minute chart, right? This was like pre-market and this was when the market opened up. <laughs> so you're able to see that, right? So that's why I'm choosing my trend lines to be there. I, I nine times out of, seven times out of 10, just depends on how the price action looks. I'm going to utilize body to bodies or I'm going to utilize a wick to body, if that makes sense. Um, let me go into the chat. Why do you draw it on the body and not the wicks? Uh, because I like trading support and resistance. Um, if I'm using wicks, in my mind, it's like I'm trading supply and demand. I'm, I'm trading a rejection. I'm trading a bounce. And for me, I don't know. It's just better to trade support and resistance to me. For me, like my style of trading. No worries, bro. Uh, with your trend lines drawn like that, that would be more riskier. Also, uh, why do you, why would it be more riskier? If you can elaborate, so I can understand your point of view. Um, so yeah, and I'll show you other ways that I draw. I draw them as well, right? So boom, let's go find something else on the chart. Like, see this price action here. I wouldn't mind like from here, I would utilize this wick from here. Why? Because if we look at the bodies of these candlesticks, it's not that far off from it. You know what I'm saying? This is extremely far off from any support and resistance. It's like a, a hard rejection zone and we're on a seven minute chart. So we can tell like, you know, we'll have to break down the time frame to really get some candles in there, right? Um, so let me draw it here and I'm gonna draw it two different ways because I like this way to that way as well. So like from here, and I'm still not going to use that way. <laughs> as soon as I start the chart, I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it from that way because that's a high still, right? Um, All the way down to here into the body, just like that. And that, and look, let me show you, let me bring it all the way down so you can see how it starts to break. I'll do this. Come on, man. let me be free. All right, I like it like that. On um, bodies, right? So if we look at this, like when I draw it like this from this wick, is I'm just grabbing this wick just to grab it. And just to be honest, it's because if I put it to this body, it's just going to look nasty and, and retarded, right? And it's not going to be, that's not good to do that, right? But having it just like this, I'm able to see now, even when it wanted to reverse, right? It started reversing here, right? So we could have got a little bit of percentage there, but as soon as it broke out of here, I was good. You know what I'm saying? And I was able to see, oh, nice cup and handle, inverse head and shoulders. Cause if you're in a cup and handle, you're in an inverse head and shoulders, right? Um, so long story short, that's how um, I view it right there. And you even seen that I was gonna do wick to wick and I chose not to do it as soon as I started to do it that way, right? And that's how I've had majority of my success. Getting into early, not waiting for confirmation. Uh, now I have a question for you. What is confirmation? What does confirmation mean to you? And I get what you, where you're coming from with like getting too early. Uh, I don't, if I utilize trend lines, I highly doubt I'm gonna get into early. I'll probably be more snipery than anything because I'm going to wait for something to close and stay bouncing off of this line. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to, that's going to make me feel even much more better. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that, it, hey, it'll bounce off that line and come right back down. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I'm also asking, what do you deem confirmation? Because confirmation can mean a lot to different people. Um, but I'll let you know the way I view confirmation. Confirmation for me is going to be due to the price action. The only thing that's going to confirm something for me to be able to get in a trade or anything like that is going to be the price action. Um, the RSI is more so of a lead. It just shows me what's going on. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Exactly what I think is going on. I also see it on my RSI. It'll guide me in the trade, right? But the confirmation is always going to come from the candlesticks. A new high, almost as if you see what 
you want to see just my style okay no yeah bro like that's why i'm asking so like i can understand you um a new high you see like me i would that wouldn't be a confirmation for me like say because i could be viewing it differently right say a new high to me is like what i just read is like okay cool i missed this i missed this push cool whether you grab well going off of what you just said how i view it is like i'm gonna wait for the new high and then i'm gonna take the trade a lot of times waiting for new highs it just gave you a high you know what i'm saying then you gotta look at the chart if it just gave you a high from the previous high we have to be very bullish you know what i'm saying like look this high to this high we just do 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 then we came back down then we came back down then we came back down so that's how i view the charts like that's why i always say like when you're gonna take an entry point a good a good practice to always do whether whatever time frame you're on especially if you're on a bigger time frame you want to go ahead and run down to that uh, uh to the one minute and look at that rsi in the one minute and see if we're overbought because you could be trying to enter something right that just triggered but it's just triggering and it needs to pull back and then go blast off um if that hopefully that makes sense does it um but yeah this is uh just to keep going um on that's how I like to use trend lines. Uh, let me check the chat real quick. Gotcha. Awesome. Um, this is how I like to use trend lines, but there's a lot of different ways to uh, be able to utilize them. That's just the best way I I was able to um, maximize on my profits using trend lines when I first started trading. I don't really use them anymore um, that much. I just see it on the chart. I can see the trend um, and I just keep going with the price action. But one thing that I would give you is even when you're drawing trend lines, you want to find reversals, right? Um, whether there's some actionable signals, uh, such as a doji, uh, hammers, inverted uh, hammers or inverted pin bars, however you may like uh, like to um, say it, um, but also any type of reversal patterns like morning stars, um, tweezer bottoms, tweezer tops, evening stars. Uh, I like, well, I don't deem three white soldiers to be a reversal as a continuation, but I would say like those reversal patterns, right? And let's say we're on a higher time frame, it'll still be the same thing. Maybe just a little bit different because we, we got like cleaner price action. But even like from here, I'll literally grab this wick. I'll start drawing. I'll be like, nope, I don't want to grab that wick anymore, right? Because I like, I like bodies of the candlesticks. So if I'm going to stay on that wick, I don't want these candles to be breaking through this through this line because the trend is down. I want to keep that as a rejection, right? So even from here, that's the best way I would draw it right there, right? And I will make this a little bit longer because I'm going to want the bodies of those candlesticks, right? Even how I reject it right there but I'm getting a nice, nice little wicks. Okay, nice, you know, you don't came right back his, into his zone. That's just how I like to see it. You know what I'm saying? Then this is just so perfect for me in my eyes, the way I like to trade, because I'm like, dang, indecision, right? Doji, indecision with a reversal right there, right at the trend, coming back down, reversal pattern. You know what I'm saying? How are we going to play out? We're going to shoot back up or we're going to come back down to test the trend and come back up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let's move on to the next one. Raise. I like to use these as well when I'm drawing broadening formations, right? Well, let's go to a smaller time frame. We got a perfect broadening formation right here, right? So when I'm drawing, you could draw broadening formations with a trend line as well. Um, I'll show you why I use this one. The reason I use it is because of that. It's, as you've seen, when I was using the trend line, I would have to draw my trend line, then I would have to grab the end and, and extend it, right? So with the ray, it's automatically extended, right? So that's why I like to, that's why I like to use it. Right, but um, do want to give you some insights real quick. Mm. 
So, what was I about to say? Oh, when drawing broad informations, one thing that you want, like, because you just see me go from basically left to right. That's not how you draw broad informations. It's just, I know how to draw them and I know how to find my legs. When you draw any broad information, right, you want to start from your right and you want to go to the left. Now you'll understand why I just went from left to right is because I don't want to have to do this and like, uh, how do I do it? like extend this out. I don't want to have to do that. Right. But you can do it just like that. I used to have to do it just like that. Right. I'm going to still grab a low from here and get it right here. Right. Just knowing that this is my bottom, this is my top. And then I'm going to have a 50 mark, like, well, not a 50 mark. It's just me knowing broadening formations. You're always going to have like, it's just like the RSI, um, a middle level where it likes to bounce. You know what I'm saying? If it's not bouncing off of that middle level, it's rejecting under that middle level, right? And coming back down. Um, so I like to use rays for broadening formations, right? Anytime I'm drawing any type of broadening formation, I, I do it that way. Since I'm talking about broadening formations, I'm going to just bring it all the way down to the disjointed one and to the disjoint channel and as well to the flat top bottom. These were the first ones I started using when I started with broad information. Moody, tell them why so they can understand because they're probably going to go through it themselves, right? Let me just go to different. I like seeing different price action. We could use it from here and we'll bounce off of that one. Um, When drawing broad information, oh, let's not do that though, Moody. I'm going to bring it up to a higher time frame just to get a, a cleaner view of it. I was going to get this little part, but it kept going and I didn't really have a second leg down because it just so you can understand, right? I couldn't have drawn it here because I have a leg up, but I don't have a leg down, right? From this low, there's no other low, right? It's, it's, it's trailing up, right? We have an uptrend going on. So you always have to find a leg down. So from a low to a low, right? And a high to a high. So um, say real quickly, you can take this one and literally it looks just like a trend. You'll literally take it from the high that you're taking it to, to that high and you bring it down like a triangle. And the reason I would use this one is because I suck at drawing broadening formations. Like when I say I sucked, I learned over time from educating people like, oh no, nah, everybody goes through that problem because everybody started asking me the question where it's like, hey, do I need to be, do I need to utilize a three bar for a broadening formation. Like, do I need to utilize this bar right here to create a broadening formation? No, you don't, a three bar is, the three bar creates broadening formations, right? So there's gonna be a broadening formation on a three bar, but it does not have to be on a three bar to create the broadening formation, right? You can have anything, right? So now that I'm drawing it like this, just bringing it down here, you can see the overall um, broadening formation, right? So we know that this is truly his bottom, right? But is inside of another broadening formations. And that's what happens with broadening formations, right? I know this is not a class on broadening formations, but when you're in one, you're always in a broadening formation. I'll put it just like that. But when you're in one, it creates more with inside of it because broadening formations are meant to expand, right? That's why they are three bars. They take out the, the high of the previous candle and they take out the low of the previous candle. So it expands the price action, right? Is the opposite of an inside bar. An inside bar is consolidating and it's tightening the range, right? So it's going to consolidate more. It's not just going to expand, but from those inside bars of consolidation, you get expansion, right? After the consolidation. Um, does that make sense? So that's what I would use right here for these. And I would show you like I would back then, I would literally grab this trend line. Like I know what I'm doing now, so it's different. And I'd be like, dang, how do, how do I do this? You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, okay, dang, but this is not a low. And then I started getting confused. And then I would draw it. And I'd be like, but this doesn't look like this, like a triangle. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how you see broad information. That doesn't matter. It Like the price action is going to draw, draw out your broad information, right? Um... So even when that was happening, 
right? I was able to find this tool inside of here where now let's say I had a broadening formation, but it had a flat bottom. Meaning it's still it, it's still in its broadening formation, but it was more so flat. I would use this one, right? Um, and you can utilize these things uh, for a lot of a lot of different reasons, a lot of different things. It doesn't just have to be a broadening formation. You can utilize it for a trend. You know what I'm saying? Um, it'll just have to fit the way that you trade. Uh, let me go back into the chat. Is is it best to draw your trend lines on higher higher slash lower time frames or only on the one you're using? Um, so what I would say is always bigger time frame to smaller time frame, never smaller to bigger, because if you go smaller to bigger, here I'll show you, it's going to mess up your uh it's gonna mess up your trend of what you're drawing, right? So I'm gonna just grab these from the lows and lows, like right here, right? And even me, like I would have ended up doing this. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. So I grabbed this wig. Me, I'm still wanting bodies, but I grabbed the bottom of this wig just because it's like a high low, a high low, a high low. It's just following that trend. You know what I'm saying? So even when I draw trend lines, it's always going to go to like the price action on how the price action behaves, right? Um, like if this these candlesticks came down a little bit under here and came back up, I will have my trend showing how it came down a little bit and came right back in. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to move this trend to fit that. I'm not going to do that, right? Um question though hold on i got sidetracked okay uh so let's say i drew it on a 15 and i go to like a four it's not gonna be it's, that's what i mean like you don't want to go smaller to bigger you want to go bigger to smaller and you can always fix it if you need to on a smaller time frame right I'm going to just go back up instead of going down. See, like, I'm going to show you what I do. Literally, uh, I got to go. Jeez Louise. My eyes aren't even focused up here. I don't even know what's going on up here. I'm looking at this, this, literally. And how, okay, this is when you started to break out, came back and test. That's what I start to look at, right? Where somebody could have possibly did it that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I broke this trend right there. And then boom, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I want to catch it precisely, if that makes sense. And it's only because I... I love reading naked candlesticks. I love reading price action. So it's like, I'm not just going to stay on the four hour. I'm going to do some multiple time frame analysis. And it's just going to, even if I'm on a one minute, I go to the one second and I drew a trend. And let's say it was to break down that one second is going to show me that full candlestick of that one minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's just testing. Oh no, read it. And I'm saying reading the actual candlesticks and identifying with it is going to give you, it's going to tell you the story of what's uh, going on. Right. Um, so I would say, let me give you a yes or no. Uh, is it best to draw your trend lines on a higher time frame to lower? Yes, absolutely. Always, always best to lower. And if you're just trading on one time frame, it's okay to draw it on that one time frame. It, it's completely fine. So, all right, we talked about the ray. We also talked about the flat top and the disjointing. Uh, this is one that I don't use uh, anymore like that. Um, I need to, though, so that I can see some more things on the chart. But I do love this tool that they provide here. Um, it's a parallel uh, trend where I'm going to tell you why I like it.
I'm not sure how anybody else would have used this. Um, I've never seen nobody use it. Um, but I I like to when I do it, you seen how when I was moving all of this, we could have just got ooh, no, no, we moved the wrong thing. Sorry. Let me get this on the circle. You know, you could have got that little bit of the price action like that, but I'm gonna want that full that full uh that full trend you know what i'm saying like because i can see it on this line where it's like okay it was respecting this line this is when it broke out of there and this is when we got that downtrend right so this is really good for me if you like the rsi and you can see the rsi how i see it right because i wouldn't even say like the rsi it's like it's, it's, it's exactly just like the fib, the Fibonacci, but the, the way that I utilize it with just the 0, 150, right? Um, and just going for like the 50 breaks or getting it at the bottom because it's support. It's the same thing with this, where it's like, if you was to, let me go to a small time frame. If you was to utilize this, right? And another reason why this is giving me a hard time is because I got this magnet on. All right. Literally, if you're using this, let's say you found a trend and it's, and it's trending down. And let's just say that you caught it like down here and you just drew that trend, right? You can always utilize this where it's like, hey, if you're bullish, right? Now, if you're bullish, buy support, meaning the bottom of it, especially if the candlestick is the price action is down here, buy the bottom of it. And you can always trim um, depending on the security, right? Because you want to look, look at the price action from here. This is like you buying it around like, I'm trying to go to like the body of it. 420, oh, I'm tripping. 420.83, right? And you could go ahead and sell. This was a 42 cent move. You could go ahead and sell when it hits that trend line when price is around like 421.31. You know what I'm saying? Like you can see it's literally at the bottom of that spinning top, right? So that's one way to do it. Now, if, you, uh, if you're a little more riskier and you want the whole move, you could get it from there and, you know, read the price action. Don't just pray that it happens. Read the price action. It breaks. You hold until you get to the top of that trend right? So you buy down here, you can trim here, and then you can completely get out your position right there. Or you can buy here and get completely out of your position right there. Just don't get mad at this tool if you go right there and it comes right back down, right? Um, it's basically like cutting your price action in half and showing you like the 50 of it, because that's what that's going to be, 50% of whatever of whatever you're, uh, you're measuring, right? So me, I think that this is really really good but you just have to have faith in yourself like another way to utilize this is like let's say you drew it and you're just watching this and you're like nah i'm gonna take the trade if this breaks out bullish you know what i'm saying you take the trade just like a trend line trend line break once it breaks that whole entire range and you can see that it's staying above it you know to hold right but one thing that i would tell you is i'm just gonna grab this horizontal ray one thing that I tell you, if you entered in right here, give yourself enough room for a stop loss, right? Don't just, unless you're just not willing to lose any money and you started like gaining some money, you can go ahead and say, hey, I, I'll cut for break even, but give yourself some room just in case it wants to travel back down and bounce off of it, right? And to get targets off of it is literally, say if we was entering here, is going off of the bodies of the candlesticks, right? So boom, right there. You just entered in right here. So you possibly may not want to take profits or if you're a scalper or you're just, you know, you're overstanding that, understanding that, hey, I'm wanting to learn to trim and take profits. That's okay too. One thing that I would tell everybody, if you're profitable, but you're seeing yourself not being able to stay consistent with your profits, it's okay to say, hey, look, let me pull out my whiteboard. Let me put out my notebook. You know what I'm saying? Let me plan. 
And for a fact, I am only, 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 only taking profits for the next three weeks or the next two weeks or give yourself a week. Like, I'm not worried if it goes 10 percent. If I have enough contracts, I'll scale. If I don't, I'm taking profits. Right. If I want to get in another trade, I'll wait patiently. I promise you, if you just do that and give yourself that's discipline. You know what I'm saying? That's you you instill discipline by repetition of what you want to do. So like if you want to get better as a trader, right? Man, I'm going into psychological stuff. If you want to get better as a trader, you have to put in the reps of what you're what you're wanting to get better at, right? If it's taking profits, you got to put in that rep. And you'll start to notice certain things. And I know I speak on it um from time to time where it's like, dang. I took profits, man. It's still moving. Identify with that. Why are we saying, hey, it's still moving? You know, is there another way that I can enter the trade? You know, you got to ask yourself, why am I not able to think this way? It's because my emotions or it's, it's fear, it's something, right? So you got to sit with yourself and, and figure that out, right? So let me delete this one. All right. Let me go back in here, my bad. So we did the trend lines. We did the raise. Um, I ain't going to lie. These two may be, I ain't going to say my favorites. I got a lot of favorites, as, as you can see. But horizontal, horizontal lines, I utilize them for support and resistance. And I basically market structure. But I, I say support and resistance because if I say market structure, it may confuse somebody, right? Or if somebody really understands market structure, they may like think of okay swing highs and swing lows with the support and resistance right so i deem any support and resistance to be the bodies of the candlesticks right um the bottom of the bottom of the the bottom of the green candlesticks are support the bottom of the red candlesticks are support right the top of the green candlestick of the body is resistance the top of the red body is also resistance, right? Until it reclaims the support, right? So that's why, and I and I normally leave them blue as you just seen how it, it, it populates. Um, and let's just say I wanted to draw some support and resistance real quick, right? I'm just gonna show you a quick way. Literally just look at the bodies of the candlesticks. One thing that I, I adore, like I truly admire about the candlesticks just showing me what they're doing is looking for reversal patterns. As soon as I find a reversal pattern, I'm like, boom. How did I just know that they're always that good? Because Moody always, not only do I, do I trade them very consistently, but I backtrack them. Be like, how did it work out here? Holy crap, you gave me another reversal pattern. Oh, snap, there was another one right there. Okay. Come back over here. Shit. Hallelujah. Oh, sorry, Father. Like another, that's a tweezer bottom reversal. A morning star on a higher time frame, right? Has to be a morning star on a higher time frame because we got to condense, right? We got to combine these two candlesticks. And when we combine them, now we got one candlestick, right? Um, so those are the things that I look for, right? Um, here, no joke. There goes another one right here, right? Tweezer bottom reversal. Bow. So as soon as I put that support there and I come over here, right, I'm able to see where it's like, yeah, that is the support. And I see how they bounced off of that. You know what I'm saying? I'll have to go a little further back. But that's what it is. So let me come back to where I originally was. Uh, where was that tweet at the bottom? Right here. So from here, I'll literally, you see me going here to the right, but that's because I'm clearing the view. Like whenever you see me going to the right, Moody's literally looking at the middle. It's not me trying to distract anybody or or anything. It's just I want if I'm right right here, this mouse is blocking me. I want to see everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you'll see me like this, getting away from price action. Why? Because even before I draw it, the line is there for me. I can clearly see it. Right. So even if I just go left and right, those are the things that I be doing. Right. That's what makes my charting uh, quicker sometimes, too, is that. I have a mouse so I can just scroll as soon as I put it on here, I'm just going back and forth sometimes. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. Yep, 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 yep. I already see it. Right. 
Uh, but what you can do is I'm using Alt H, right? And you can see when you click these things, they tell you the shortcuts that you can utilize for them to make it uh, much more quicker. But I'm going to literally go for the body of that candlestick. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And I'm going to show you about this magnet. I love the magnet. You'll always see the magnet and this pencil on on my chart. It will always forever stay green. Why? Because I like the chart fast. And with the magnet, I only like the... I like to chart around, you know, wicks and bodies of candlesticks, right? I want support and resistance and I want entry points. I think that that's the most important thing. Hey, am I going to break this support or am I going to break this resistance? And where do I need to enter and where do I need to take profits? So that's why I have the magnet on because those are the those are the only four places it's going to take me on any price action. The low, like, look, doesn't matter where I go. If I go right here, it's going to stop. I got to have this on though, right here. You see how like it it magnetizes, it's gonna stop right there, it's gonna stop at the body, it's gonna stop at the other body, that body, and that's why I'm able to do, 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 chart so fast, right? Um, and it's because, you know, I'm a, I'm a scalper, I'm a day trader, and I'm a swing trader, but at the end of the day, even when you're swinging, you don't wanna just say, oh, it's at this level, I'm, I'll just get in, I'll, I'll see what, what reacts, no, you wanna, I'm gonna wanna still go to a smaller time frame and say, okay, cool, it's now ready, let me go ahead and enter, because I don't want my swing to go below water. Like when I'm day trading or, or scalping, I don't want it to go below water um, as well. But if it happens, I know what to do to start applying risk management. And just because I utilize that word doesn't mean that I'm just going to get out that trade. No, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to start viewing the charts and things of that nature, right? Um, and you guys traded with me before where it's like, hey, my trade is not just going to go down. I'm just going to hold that trade and be like, oh, I uh, hope it goes up or something of that nature. Absolutely not. If I don't have no sentiment of that it's going up, I will cut it. I'm okay to lose. You know what I'm saying? And we all have to be in that mindset where it's like, you don't ever want to be holding something, hoping that it's going to go up. Why? Because you're not protecting your portfolio. If that thing goes all the way down, granted, we're trading options. You're only going to lose what you put in, but still, that still hurts. Losing 20 bucks hurts. You know what I'm saying? Losing anything hurts if it's not a game. Um, so real quick, let me just draw it out. Um, as soon as I'm able to stop, when what I mean by stop is that, hey, it's stop. It's not like magnetizing to anything. Literally just like that. That's, that's, that's true support and resistance. That's just a lot of lines. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't draw so many of them. When I first started, like, um, with like MSC all the way since MSC, like the other discord, you, if you've been there, you will remember when people would be like, Moody, why you got all those lines and, da, 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 da. and people wouldn't understand. So it's like, I had to find better ways for you to see my chart and things of that nature. But once I do that, right, I'm on a five minute chart. I'm gonna take this bad boy. I did it on a five minute chart for it for a reason. Take this straight to, a, it went to a two, but I'm going to take to a one. Go straight to a one. Let's go all the way to the left where we charted this at. Oop, delete. We don't want no extra line. We know we have one extra line down here somewhere. So now, this is why I be such a beast at trading. Because I just got the support and resistance from that from that higher time frame, right? Just because I say higher time frame doesn't mean it's the four hours. It's higher than the one minute, right? I just got it from the five minute. Look how perfect this is. Every single breakout. Every single breakout. So... Uh, before I go into any other one, I'll give you a gem. Now I'll just put it on real time, just so I don't see all the extra um, price action. This is stuff that I used to do when I first started trading, because it's like everybody wants to teach themselves and like figure it out, right? I went from this candlestick right here, this, and then I went from here, because I could see like this is where it's ranging from. Wow. Bow. Oh, that's why, Moody. I don't want, I'm like, no, I don't want that many lines. And it's because I'm on a one minute chart still. My bad. All right, there we go. I got that on. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, so I'm going for the bodies to candlesticks and just drawing support and resistance. I'm um, sorry I wasn't explaining all that. I'm going to go right here to the top of this body. 
right? Because I I, I want an area that it hasn't been in so I can know how to enter that trade, right? Um, and uh, this is how I can help y'all see this. I'm going to give you a gem. Let's say delete. No matter where I do it, we could do it from there. Give them that price action. Um, and then we could do this, Moody. All right, price is down there. I'm going for straight bodies of candlesticks. Straight bodies of candlesticks. Because I'm going to find my way back home. That's what I like to call it. Right? So now that I've drawn that, I made play for you. I didn't know I was going to do all this extra stuff. I think y'all may be, I'm, I think y'all may be enjoying it. Um, but uh, pardon me. But now let's see how this reacts. Uh, pause it. I wanted to go a little slower. Stop. Pause. Pause. Jesus Christ. All right. One minute. <laughs> All right. So now we just went in. And this is why Moody explained all of that. It goes so fast through my head. So you was not going to be able to see how flush it was with this line being on a five minute chart, right? Because five minutes went through this five, five, one minute candlesticks went through this five minute chart, right? So you looking at it, it's like, oh, no, that thing just smashed straight through. It's still following support and resistance, right? On a smaller time frame. And to get you to see it from here, it's still following the bodies of the candlesticks. If we look at this blue, dang, they're all blue, Moody. If we look at the dotted line here, that's blue, right? We can see, oh, it went over this body, but look, it's at the body. Try to get your eyes off the wicks. They're always gonna, wicks are always bounce. Look at the fact that this price line, bro, I really want y'all to become millionaires. This price line is literally body, 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 body. And when I say body, it's literally at the open or the close of that, of those candlesticks, right? Okay, granted, it bounced and wicked off of that one, right? You have to go look at more price action to start seeing it, where it's like body, whoa, Moody not playing, body, so flush, right? So when I tell you that the market closes and opens at market structure, it literally does. It literally does. Go look at the price right now, wherever it closed and watch it be flush with different bodies on different time frames. I'm a geek. Like, yeah, I don't think I know, like, for real, for real. Y'all don't remember how many hours I'll be on live and stuff like that. Like, I really love these candlesticks, and I really love to trade. Like, I'm explaining why. I was great at a lot of things in life. Everything I chose to do, I was dope at it, right? One of the biggest things I wanted to do was, like, rap. And it's just the fact that I did not want to hinder my heart, like, because I know how loving I am, but I understand how I was able to become like this, right? If you put yourself around certain situations or circumstances, it doesn't matter how good you are, you will become what, you, what you're around, right? Um, and I was aware of that, right? So, like, with, with trading, for the simple fact, like, that I know... Oh my God. Like I used to think that this was normal, like to be able to start trading. Like, yeah, I was invested into the stock market, but I had no clue what I was doing. I was just buying shares. I thought that that was what you're supposed to do. Like my biggest holding at one time, uh, I was young. I was 21 was McDonald's. And it's just because I ate McDonald's. <laughs> and I was just like, Hey, I don't know. Look, they say they serve a million people. <laughs> but, um, long story short, uh, it was a simple fact that I was able to quit my job in less than, 60 days right from january 21st all the way to the um to the end of march beginning of april i just like to always say january 21st to when my son came because everything that i did three years ago aligned with my child getting here like literally in the same time period so i was just like wow god is big um so that's why i'm so like obsessed with charts and stuff of that nature because i was able to learn it so fast quit my job I only quit my job, support my family from doing it. And amazing. Like, that's why I stay on here so so long. Cause it's like, bro, it's okay. Like, it's all right. I know I have time. I don't want to lie to you and be like, oh, I'm busy. I'm doing this. No, like I have time, bro. So it's like, 
I enjoy to teach this. I enjoy to educate you on this. Why? Because when you feel the freedom, you're going to, I don't know, everybody's different. It's not that you say that you're going to do it for somebody else, but you're going to tell somebody like, and get somebody to like receive that freedom, right? So like, let's go back here since we're still on the horizontal lines. Um, as you see, look at the body of this when it opened up, flush with it. Look at the body of this one when it closed. Wow, I didn't chart this on a one minute chart, right? So now I'm just gonna let it play out and watch it, watch it play. I did this on a five minute to trade it on a one minute. You feel me? Smash straight through that one. Boom, you see how it just closed? Look at how it's opening and closing my loved ones. Look, almost, that's why I say don't fight. Do not fight the price of two or three cents. This is something I literally create. I wouldn't say created. I take that back. That's ego talking. This is something literally I studied and studied and studied and studied and then practice it, practice it and practice it. So I know that I'm not wrong. It's like when you know you're right about something and you either want to tell the world or whatever, it's like, you know, you're right. I know I'm right. I, I just don't feel cool saying, Hey, I know what price is going or I know this because for one, I may know. I know two things. I know where it can go up and it can go down. Do I know where it's going to go? No, the price action has to lead me. Everything is in real time. You know what I'm saying? Right? So look at how it closes right there and just let it play out and let it run through these lines. Look, look at the body of these candlesticks. And you're going to laugh when you get a body and then you get a wick right back inside of in, inside of your ranges. You're like, dang, how'd that happen? Like, ooh, rejection. Ooh. Right back. Stop playing. And I literally charted, like, as I did this, like, I ain't going to sit here and lie to you. I just don't want you to do what I did. I literally traded this, did it in real time, made my money, lost money. And then I literally, while the market was open, would do this. And that's how I was able to beat FOMO. Because as I chose to learn, I wanted to trade. And I'm like, no, no, let me get this. And I would literally talk to myself like, bro, come on down, bro. Look how many hours is left. You can still do this. Figure this shit out. Figure this out. Why? Because I will I will be the person when the market was closed. This will be my first six months. The market would close and I'll look at the I'll look at the chart and be like, wow, I fucked it and I cashed that move. And I don't like to complain. So when I start to complain, oh, best believe I'm about to start working now, right? Because I just don't, I don't like that in my temple. I don't like that in my body. There's no reason for me to be complaining. If I'm complaining, it's because I have lack of, right? And that's going to just be lack of knowledge. Go learn. Um, My bad. Let me go in. Beautiful. Appreciate you, bro. All right. And 11 bang, bang. Ask questions, bro. Ask questions. I'm on a, I'm, I'm on, I'm on a road today. I've been playing with my son. I'm full of love. And I'm going to just let it play out so you can see how, how it reacts to all of these situations. And this is why I rather, if I didn't, if you don't give me anything, if you don't give me the fib, I'm going to trade support and resistance. Like, that's what helped me quit my job. Like, the strat, everything, everything I do, the RSI is all cultivated to support and resistance. I just add to my will. I don't reinvent it. Look, you see how that thing just dropped? Boom, come straight to that line, how it did. I'm just talking about support and resistance here, right? I'm not saying like, oh, it's going to come to this level or this or that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all I'm that's all I'm saying. Then all you want to look for, if you want to be the best trader ever, just look for freaking reversal patterns. Just look for morning stars. Tweeze the bottoms. Tweeze the tops or evening stars, morning stars. I promise you, you'll be the best trader ever. Now, I'm going to give you the gem. Just don't do it on a one-minute chart do it on a one minute chart is you're going to experience the same thing you experienced when you first started trading and what was that man it's overwhelming man it's ah oh, dang oh i just got faked out nah. just go to a three minute or five minute chart they barely miss on those i just i would just have to continue pouring in with love receiving questions to to really help you identify with that larger time frame. That's my big, that's my biggest edge that I don't, I don't talk, I don't call it my edge. I, bigger time frame. Bigger time frame. RSI is dope. <laughs> Just that bigger time frame. 
knowing the price action and knowing the time frame of support and resistance, it is a wrap. And just knowing that candlestick, knowing that she just ran all the way down and took all that liquidity to the left, right? Meaning something like this, Moody, go find it. Don't just talk about it. Yeah. Pull something else up. Man, who did it? 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 Um, ooh, cat. I ain't talking about a, a candlestick. I am talking about a candlestick like this, though. I am. But I wanted, I wanted a better one like this. So look, yeah, we're traveling down. You see these? First of all, this is a reversal pattern, right? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I would have not known what it was going to happen off of this expansion until the next candlestick. That's how I'm going to trade it. I'm a bull, right? But one thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to put it on the wick. I'm going to put it on the wick. I'm going to pass the wig just a tad bit and make sure I'm on that guy. Oh, we don't, we don't need the dates. We're going to go find a date. Watch this. This is what I want you to see. I'm learning how to explain myself. You see, just look from this line to this line. And, and I don't care about this line. What I care about is the fact that there's no candlesticks here. That's what I care about. They're all up there. So I know that this is my resistance. I know that this is where I'm taking price back up if I freaking bounce from here. I already know that. And I drew it on this wick to show you all it did was come take this liquidity out. Once you can identify with that, right? Yeah, it looks like some great support and resistance because it is. But what it went and did was take all of this and it could have possibly took this one out. Possibly. I don't know if I drew it perfect. No, I did. I put it right on it. So it left all this liquidity. This liquidity right here, it left it. But you would think in your mind that that's a, oh, it's so much more liquidity. Mm-mm. They took all the liquidity. This right here took all this liquidity right here from when the market started. Boom, boom. Let me get all that. Bam, let's go. So all the liquidity is sitting here, sitting here, sitting here. And watch this. That liquidity already got taken out. They wanted it, some type of liquidity that was down here, right? We're just not able to see it on this time frame. And you see, when I drew that second one, that was on support. They took all that, they been took all that liquidity. And they're going to run the price back up. I love when I see stuff like that, right? And especially if I'm overbought. I'm sorry, oversold. If I'm oversold and I know that you just took liquidity, I'm going long. And if I feel like I ain't going to catch it because maybe I'm in too many trades or I'm just panicking and I'm just like, man, I don't know, man, I want it. Everybody goes through it. You go through it like, man, I don't know if it's going to go. Guess what? I buy myself some time. Buy myself some time and I'd be so happy with my old self when two days walk, go by and I'd be like, yes, let's go. And that's what, you know what I mean? It gives me all the confidence, right? But I trade the same things, right? Tweeze the bottles, tweeze the tops. I trade all these patterns the same way. So it's just second nature to me, right? Let me delete all this. I think, yeah, I was... Did y'all, uh, was y'all able to um, understand uh, the support and resistance before I continue to move forward? Uh, you consider broadening formation form, you consider broadening formation same as liquidity grabs? Yes, for the ranges. Depending on the time frame that you're looking at, like if you're on a smaller time frame, um, for that range because you know how you could be inside of a broadening formation and it, it, it broke that leg up and creates another broadening formation but then it may come down and then keep going up for the range absolutely but not to to to, to not even make it complicated yes they're liquidity graphs because that's what the broad information is is uh an essentially doing is going to a high to take out the the biggest liquidity that they have up there the liquidity graph to take it back down low to take that liquidity you know what I'm saying? That's all the broad information does. And that's why I love them. Um, all right, cool. So let's go back in here. 
I mean, I know I was going to take forever with this class. All right, we talked about all that. Uh, I don't use this. We talked about these as well. I don't use any of these things. And I'm just at a place where it's like, bro, I don't know what that is. Um, I'm not even going to try to talk about it because I don't know what it is. I don't utilize it. Fibonacci, I love it. So inside of here, let me just look and see real quick. Nah, 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 nah. I don't use none of this stuff. I don't use none of this stuff. I only use um, the fib. Right? The fib. <laughs> uh, I was about to say, I don't know what I do without her, but I damn sure know what I do without her. I'll support and resistance. Let me go to the chat real quick. But thanks, bro. Absolutely. More than welcome, brother. Um. Oh, oh, bro. I'm tripping. Read the name. That's Cuzzo, right? Oh, Cuzzo. Bro, listen. I ain't even, listen, we sent over the, the, the present for the baby. God bless Bryce. We sent over the present. The real present, and she, we got a new one, bro. The real one is sitting um, over there, bro. I, I, I still haven't went to the mailbox to take it. And it's because I be forgetting. It's because every single time I see it, it's an Elmo. And I didn't uh, I didn't know uh, what you call. I have forgot. And my wife is like, no, he loves Elmo. That's what it is. But I have a whole bunch of Elmos because my wife, like she's in love with Elmos and she's been collecting them since she's been young. So it's been throwing me off, but sent it over, brother. My bad. I felt bad because I don't like to make no children wait. Um, all right. So let's just start right here so we can, we're just going to have a little bit of fun with the with, with the 50% retracement. Uh, before we have some fun with it, I use the brush just to like circle things to speak. I'm just going to go over some of them. Like that's just, you know, I just use that to circle things. The arrow, um, I only use it to like point and talk about something like, hey, you see this bear flag breakout? You know what I'm saying? I only utilize it for that. I don't utilize it to like do trend lines or anything of that nature. Um, the rectangle, I will start utilizing this. Um, I just want to find a different word for it because my my buddy that trades, um, he's super dope. Uh, he calls it a money box. His name Jay. Um, we, um, yeah, I ain't gonna talk about everything, but uh. Long story short, uh, he calls it a money box, right? Um, so I want to find a different word for it, um, but I will start using this um, for consolidations and just to like help people understand like, hey, look, you, oh, I got to take off this magnet. Hey, look, we're going to break out of this money box. He calls it a money box. I'm going to find something else for it. But these are money boxes. When you can find anything trading sideways like this, just go ahead and find that range. Right. And when you find that range, you take that bottom and you buy that bottom <laughs> Buy the bottom. Don't be scared. Like go for sure. It's, or even if it's breaking out, you take it at the top of that break of that money box. And I love it because it's like it's highlighted and it's like, hey, look, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you my trick. <laughs> my trick is that I'm going to put an alert right above it. I don't want it touching no wicks, no anything. So I can move away from this, right? Just like this. So I can move away from it. And I know once it triggers, I'm taking a trade. And if it triggers to go for puts, that's my stop loss up there. If it triggers to go for calls, that's my stop loss right there. You're more than welcome, my brother. Um, so that's how uh, I'll show you another, uh, not another way, but uh, just another example. Like right here, we got another money box. Then we got a huge money box right there. Um, let me stop saying that because then I'm gonna start calling it that, man. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, eh, it's not that. I don't really like this one. It's all right. I'm gonna tell you why I don't like it. Uh, reason I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't even know how I can explain it. It's like, even when it broke out, this three bar, this is all I see. It's like this three bar came right back to it. Like, I don't like it, right? Um, and I knew that before I even drew it. That's why I said, oh, no, nah, I don't like it. That That's just 
a failing cup and handle. This one's beautiful. This is a big money box. Moody. This is a big rectangle box. <laughs> I'm going to hit them up tomorrow. I got to shout them out, bro. It's too fire. Uh, this is the only time. I'm glad that I found another example. Uh, the only time I, I let this wick hang out like this, right? Because we don't have a lot of other wicks hanging out um, like that. And then it's also an actionable signal. So I'm just taking like the body of it, like the bottom of the uh, support of that. Um, and I also like how it's breaking out of that, right? So long story short, you can. that's how you take that trade as well too, right? Um, and put your stop loss up there. Uh, you, one thing I would tell you, you can always use a lot. Like, look, everything has a fifty percent to it, right? So even like right here, I'm gonna draw the line. Right here is like fifty. So you could have put your stop loss right there, but just always remember that you you you're doing that to you know shorten your uh your losses versus your risk. But um, I said that so wrong. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, you're doing that to basically protect your capital, right? Not to have a larger stop loss. Um, but long story short, I will always leave it where it's supposed to be. Um, just so it don't scare me out the trade. And another reason why is because that's how you're supposed to trade, right? You're supposed to leave yourself some room. Um, and now if you get stopped out, you get stopped out, right? But knowing where to place those stop losses or entry points are very, very vital to your trade. Now, one thing that it will do for you is if you're putting a stop loss and you're getting smacked out your trade, right? It's not to say that it, I don't even want to say it like that. If you, if you if your if your stop loss is a little too tight and you keep getting smacked out your trade, it's because you don't have enough capital to trade that stock. Because if you did, you'll you'll set your stop loss a little bit better. Like say we're we're trading a security that only moves 20 cents a day. You're not going to put your stop loss at 20 cents. You probably put your stop loss 75 cents or something of that nature, right? Or about a dollar. So you got to, um, you gotta always got to keep that in mind, right? So I definitely like the rectangle for um, things of that nature, just to catch consolidations and to break out of those consolidations. Um, cause I, I'm going to do the fib, but I may, I may go crazy when I do the fib. So I'm just trying to go through a few more others. Uh, I don't utilize any of this stuff inside of here. Uh, when it comes to this, the only thing I utilize is text if I need to uh, write something on on a chart. And then like, I only utilize this when I'm helping somebody. Like and I, I'm charting and then I may do this and be like, boom, look at this right. Ooh. <laughs> look at this right here. Look at that right there and things of that nature, right? That's what I utilize that for. It's really just to help. Um, um, anything else in here? Did I utilize? No, not at all. I might just start using comments though, because I like how it looks over the text. <laughs> uh, I don't use any smiley faces or any anything of that nature. Uh, Moody, explain that. I I don't. I like emojis and stuff like that. I would never use them when I'm trading. Um, and it's because this is my money. I, this is serious to me. This is not a joke. This is not something that I want to look at an emoji and get happy or anything. No, I want to be focused. And that's why you probably see me sometimes. Like I'd be joke. I'd be, you know, I'd be joking. But if you ever see me live trade and stuff like that, I'm very serious. If I say something, like, and I'm like, oh, man, come on. Like, I'm talking for myself, you know, and things of that nature, like controlling my emotions and stuff of that nature. Like, hey, come on. I know we're going up because I see this. It's just that liquidity grab. You may need that liquidity grab, but we're going right back up. There's no reason for me to cut this trade. Why? Because I'm down and I know that I'm going back up. Now, if I want to cut this trade at break even or in some profits, that's cool. I ain't even tripping. I got some money out the market. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm down in a trade, I know it's going to go back up. No, this is just, that's an emotion. That's an, that's an emotional, not emotional. That's something emotional that you have to get over. Uh, my bad, I got five trades. Nothing there. Oh yeah, so that, I was on the smiley faces. I wouldn't use the smiley face uh, for anything. Uh, the ruler... Uh, it's just to measure your bars. Um, oh, 
I didn't even know that, but it does also give you volume. Just measure the percentage move um, of what you're trading. Oh, I wouldn't say trading, but what you're looking at, right? Uh, my One of my favorite things, I have a few favorite things, is going to be this magnet. Definitely this magnet. I'm always going to have it on. I'm only going to turn it off if, like, if I get annoyed because I'm trying to chart. That's the only reason I turn it off. Like, I leave, man. Let me be great, right? Um, one thing about this magnet, I keep it on weak. I don't like it on strong because it annoys me. When it's on strong, it's just like, it's really strong. You know what I'm saying? Like the magnetized, like I'm trying to go to this wick right here and it's still like, you know what I'm saying? So I like it weak where it's just like, it magnetizes to like where I'm going to. And you know that it's strong when it has these little signs on it, right? Um, the pencil I keep on as well. Uh, for the simple fact that if I start to chart and I do that and I get this high, I would have to click that again and then I have to do that. I don't like to have to do that. It's a waste of my time. And everybody, I, I feel like everybody feels that like when the market opens or you're trying to trade, you want to do whatever you want to do before the market or, you know, before you're about to like start potentially like, no, I really want to enter this trade. You know what I'm saying? That's why I always look at the market before I start trading. I, oh, this is going on. That's what's going on. Okay, what's the economical events? I normally already look at the economical events by Sunday, right? That's just, it's not that it's planned. It's just a habit, right? There's certain things that I planned a long time ago that I was like, oh, let me do this on this day. Let me do this. Let me do this. That now I don't even think about it. It's just a habit that, oh, snap, let me go check this like. Sunday, I already know, like, bro, I don't see the, I don't see the sun. Oh, hold on. Let me check futures. What's going on? Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's just a habit. So that's basically everything I'm going to go on to the fifth. Oh, then we also, so the pencil, we also have this lock tool, right? Um, I don't keep it on because I have the, uh, the pencil on, right? So if you lock your tool, it'll do the same thing as well, where, Oh, no, actually, it doesn't. That's why I stopped utilizing. Yeah, it doesn't. That's why I started using a pencil. And it took me uh, and where I got that from. Um, I always like to say where I got stuff from because you may want to uh, go and check that person out. Where I got this from is Sarah Sniper. Because um, I would watch her chart all the time and be like, bro, how the fuck is she charting so fast? Like She's like, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, what the heck? And I'd be trying to do it. And then uh, that's why I always say, look at someone's chart. If you look at someone's chart, it'll tell you so much about them. You know what I'm saying? Whether, hey, do you really do that? You talk that, but I don't see that. Um, or, and, and it's because we all, and, and when I say that, it's not having a negative mindset. It's just coming from, you know, real thoughts. When you enter any trading group, you have your questions of, hey, you really doing that? Or, hey, you know what I'm saying? You You question certain things. Until you start seeing like, oh, no, nah, this person really be doing this. And then you, you're a little more relaxed. You're a little more trusting and stuff of that nature. Right. So I saw her doing that and I wanted to get better as well. And then when I started utilizing it, I was just like, oh, my gosh, I could chart so much more faster. And it's just like I overstand it. And since I chart in a way that is a shredding way, the way I chart. It, it just gives me less ease. Like if you look at coin real quick, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I know what's going to happen. My white line is my entry and I know to go up, go and take, take all those out. That's, that's just what I know. Like I tried a QCOM today for, uh, Corinne, um, right. And you'll see how it just looks so clean. I like to see charts like that. Oh, and I'll show you when it populates, where it's just extremely clean, where it's like, okay, cool. I see the price action. I see what's going on, right? I know about the 50 mark. We could have took it at the 50 mark, but I know to wait for this, for, for the break of this line. It, I can I can be conservative and wait for the break and the retest or just the break itself, or I can be aggressive and get it as soon as it triggers, right? But if I'm going to be aggressive as soon as it triggers, regardless of whatever time frame I'm on, I want to go travel over to that one minute and see, hey, are we overextended, right? Now, if you see that the R, if it's triggering and you see like the R size at the 50 or the R size um, oversold, buy it. It's about to run. 
right? Um, that's just a quick gem. Um, but I like to see things like that, right? Where let me just I'm gonna delete that 50% retracement so we don't see it. Whereas like I know if it goes trigger here, right? And this is what this is how I trade. Me, if I'm not in the trade, I'm gonna put my alert right a little under my line every single time because I, I need to enter the trade. Right. And the reason I, I do that is because I don't always buy the same amount of contracts. It, it depends on the security and the premium price. So it's just like I have to look at that and do my calculations. Like, OK, cool. I can buy these many contracts. Right. So I have mines already set at like automatically buying 15 contracts. Right. But I know that I'm going to buy more. So I have to adjust that. So that's the reason that I put my alerts just a little beforehand, just in case. I need to be able to get into that trade. Now, if it triggers and it starts coming back down, I'll leave it alone, set another alert, right? Um, and when I do set that other alert, it's going to be up over it because I already know that it's triggering. I want to make sure that it's up over. I don't want to come look at the chart and it's just doing the same thing again. Um, yep, that's about that. And then uh, last thing, uh, y'all need me to go over the 50%, uh, the, the, the Fibonacci, y'all need me to go over that? Drop a two, drop a two if y'all don't need me to go over it. Drop a one if y'all if y'all need me to go over it. I know we got some beasts out here. It's all right. You can you crawl out your bed real quick. You feel know I me? Mean? You know what I'm saying? Take the bond it off. Like, hey, Moody, I was just listening, man. Gosh. I'm saying, go ahead and slide it off. Take off, you know what I'm saying? The slippers. Oh, dang. I thought y'all were going to say two. Stop playing. All right. No, nah, I'm joking. Um, y'all give me two minutes just to gather my thoughts. My heart be racing, I hear my son. I appreciate you, Corinne. She said, take three. Take an extra one, uh, Moody. Take an extra. I appreciate you. Ooh. I'm going to create a channel um for class suggestions so y'all can drop like class suggestions on like hey moody i want to learn this or hey moody can we uh do this um or anybody in the group you know what i'm saying hey zay i'm trying to learn how to do this bro you, you mind doing a class like this i think it's always better it's always great you know to do a class and inform people and bring great value but i, I also think it's super dope when um it's something that someone needs because if someone needs it, more people need it. Ooh, I appreciate you. Let me get here, man. Let me go ahead, man. Let me call you out tomorrow. I'll take you up after the word. Look at that blessing. I need to start taking my email. All right. Cozy, cozy, cozy. All right, y'all. So let's talk about the big. 
Man, I love the fear, to be honest. Um, no, nah, okay. That was QCOM. All right, no, my bad. I'm in my mind like, yo, did I? I was about to delete these alerts. Like, hold on, these are not my right alerts. No, there's my right alerts. But I'm going to rob myself. Hold on. Uh, this because I'm swinging cat. I set another alert right here because I didn't notice that I left such a huge gap and off of the market structure. And the thing is, um, I'm obsessed with taking profits. That's why I go heavy on a trade. And then I, you know, depending on, like, I haven't been on a, I haven't been on like a big swinging trading journey right now. Um, I have been swinging, but it's like runners. If that makes sense. Like, I'm not swinging my position. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like if you get in a trade right now and you went 50, 70 percent, you take some off the table. And let's just say you leave a few runners and you let those run. And that's what I've been doing. Um, And it's just it's just safer right now. You know what I'm saying? Especially throughout these months. But it's getting trust me, it's about to get better. Um. And I set the alert there. I just want I, I just want you guys to like really learn this. It's because this is the market structure, right? We see that reversal right there and it popped back up. So yes, this price is going to go back up, but it already rejected right here, right? And that's close to its 50% retracement. So its next trajectory is to go to the top of this candlestick, right? Either, either the weight or the body of the candlestick. And that's where you should be taking profits. I'll be a little greedy because I'm going to see it. Um, and I will take profits, but I'll be a little greedy for this alert here because I I say if it doesn't break and hold above here or even close and just stay above there right um below it like right under it um what you call it is not it's gonna reject but if it if it breaks above sorry if it breaks above and it stays right under it like at market close it's nine times out of ten it's gonna break and it's gonna go up right especially with the volatility coming in in um on the rise of the market opening, right? Um, so yeah, now let's get into the 55th. Uh, let me go to a different chart because I don't want all this, all these lines to be there. Uh ooh, that go to ZMG. They about to have earnings too. I bet you they're gonna go up for earnings. I normally don't tell people to trade anything for earnings. Shit, you see my chart. Fuck. <laughs> um let me go to another one. What we do on this one? It's cool, but uh, yeah, I'm playing them for earnings and I'm buying calls. Data dog went crazy off that PMG. Like they went all the way to ninety one. I'm swinging dominoes too right now. Yeah, let's do it on dominoes because I know I ain't chart this. I'm about to go stupid. I'm gonna tell you, it's expensive, but we make it cheap going out the money with a little bit of time. All right, yeah, we ain't done. I'm just gonna show you what it's gonna do. It's gonna take that wick out, and it's gonna take what happened here. Oh, see, and it's gonna take that wick out. That's where we're going. We're going to about three. I want to say three sixty nine, but I'm gonna say like three sixty eight. Well, I say we we'll take we're going to three sixty nine. We're gonna take that wick out because that's this is our market structure right here. That's why I was saying like three sixty eight. You see three sixty eight sixty nine uh eighty six because I was looking to the left and I seen that hey this is where it can hold this price. Um. Do 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 fifty fib. I wanted to look nice and beautiful. Let's do this candle so you can see how much it respects the fifty percent retracement. So. And I'm going to talk about the whole price action so you don't get confused. So first things first, it gave you a nice mother bar. This is a mother bar too. Any bar that is big and full, right? I would have considered this as a mother bar. I'm going to put the 50% retracement on there too so you can see how it's going to go down. Uh, and one thing I do want to add, this is a real double bottom right here, right here. Bow, that's a real double bottom. That's what they truly look like. But sometimes they just, you know, they look a little different. 
Um, so once it once we draw this right here off of this mother bar, how we're seeing this and how we're viewing this, right? I'm gonna always say you buy right here because you'll see my chart. Like even I already deleted it, but when you see a fib up there, it's like I'm waiting for those levels, right? Um, so nine times out of ten. I'll be seeing the price already like this and already drew the, the fib on it. And I'll be seeing the price growing, growing, growing. Whereas like, yo, as soon as I, I get over that white line, right? That's my entry, right? As soon as I get over, let's just say 342.20, I'm entering that trade. First trim is always going to be my 50% retracement. That's just me. That's how I like to trade, right? But it always visits your 50% retracement. Moody explained that. Uh, Show an example right here, right? Boom, little consolidation. Boom, took a little bit of time because you're on a five hour chart, right? But it took you straight up there. I'm gonna always tell you do not fight, do not fight the chart when it's off a few cents. And I'm gonna always say 10 cents or less. Don't fight the chart about that, right? Um, the market manipulates and does a lot of things, right? So don't always wait for like, no, it has to hit that line, it has to hit that line. Now, if it has to hit that line for you to get out that trade. Um, I would say possibly trading like futures or something of that nature. And you have a TP and it's like, yo, it hits this. I'm out that trade. That's different. Right. Um, but as you see right here, it, it retraced, it, it, it retraced 50% of its price and came right back down to that support. Right. So it's always going to be doing something of that nature. Now, as you see, you could trim right there and you add, right. You could, you could trim or you, you can trim or you don't have to trim or you can add right to this, uh, scenario. Right. And then you always want to take profits when you're reaching towards the top. So when it was full, you could have took profits. Don't get greedy and be like, man, it's not hitting that line. Come on now. We're not going to get greedy for it to give us an extra five or seven dollars on a contract where, yeah, we know that that's money. But with it with it coming down, we know how it feels to be in profits a certain amount and then it coming down. And then you're like, oh, I got to take this profit. It feels a little bit different if you've been scaling. Now, if you're in the trade and you've been scaling and scaling and scaling. Right. And now it starts to come back down and then you scale out. You don't feel no type of way. Right. Um, and that's what I, I tend to do very often. Um, but if you're in your full position and it starts to go, let's just say 45 percent and you're like, nah, you know, I think it's going to keep going more. And then that thing travels back down to 15 percent and you start to get out the trade. You do feel a little like, gosh, man, I should have took all that money. I don't like to feel like that. I rather feel like I left money on the table. Why? Because I truly didn't leave no money on the table. I took my money in. Like, what are you talking about? Right. It's just identifying that. Um, so long story short, right? You could have uh, got out right here, right? Or you could have waited for this one, right? They almost hit it, but look, it didn't hit that line, then it came right back down, right? Um, and even if you have this drawn and you're seeing the price action is starting to come back down, you can always take puts, right? If you're dope at reading price action, you can take the rejection up there, but I will tell you, stay safe until you're able to do that and just take um your entry right here um when it breaks the 50 percent retracement right we can see that it opened up and it waited a little bit you could take rejections off of that one right and come back down because you know that it just broke that level but that's is this right here is a target right it is a target you can go for the target but i will always say go for that target if you was able to scale out right if you wasn't able to scale out or you have one contract or just a couple just go ahead and take all your profits right Talk to one of the analysts or whomever, and you can get back into the trade. Um, or you can just be happy and, you know, tomorrow's a new day. Um, and the same thing, too, where you could just take the break. I'm on a five-hour chart, so it's just looking like, boom, right? So if I take this down to, let's just say, a 30-minute and then go find it, it's going to look completely different. Not that it's not the ranges and the candlesticks are going to look completely different, right? And I came here so you can see like that wick didn't just wick all the way down. I was just on a bigger time. I was on a bigger time frame coming down to the smaller time frame. We can see that this bar was full for the whole. I wouldn't say the whole 30 minutes, but it closing. Right. It was full um, for the 30 minutes. Right. And then it broke up and then it was trying to use this as support and it couldn't. So it broke right back down, came down to the support of the 50 percent retracement. This is where you want to start taking puts at. Right. Could have took that put. Didn't go all the way back down. If you would have scaled out, you would have been OK um getting out at break even or you know it's just coming right back down a little bit and you're getting out right i know don't stay focused on the time that it is i'm just talking on the price action right so um you would trade this the same way if it's stuck inside of this range right you will literally buy calls here 
trim, sell. Buy puts here, right? Or buy puts here. And if you buy here, trim or sell or buy them here um, and sell, right? You'll literally trade this as a support and resistance, right? Your entry is the break for calls of the 50. Your entry for the is for puts is the break of the 50 down below, right? And one thing that I will show you, even when you get stuck in something like this and you see it giving you some nice big bars, check this out. You can come right here and literally draw 50% retracement on that big bar. Why? Because it's a mother bar and it's going to show you how, oh, snap, boom, came back into, it broke outside and it's coming back into this range, went straight to the 50. Look how it placed that 50 and it places support and resistance. Oh, goes down there, goes to the bottom of that, uh, to the top, right? Well, it's the bottom of this new one that I drew. So now we know where it's bouncing from, right? Oh, it's trying to stay inside of that other range, right? It lost that range right there. You can see how it consolidated under that price, right? What do we do? We take calls right above it. Boom, let's go. Break 50, spray 50s. And this is when you start seeing my chart that you see a whole bunch of like 50% of retracements and you see the 50s is because I drew it inside of another one and I'm taking my way back up because I see it already bouncing. Does that make sense to anybody? And if it doesn't, let me know. Oh, dang, I keep. Mm. Uh, and the fifty percent retracement literally works on every and anything, right? I could just come all the way and look. I want to show you something. I see that the price is right here. Watch me find a fifty percent retracement. Oh, why well, I gotta be on a thirty minute chart? All right, I'm gonna draw two of them because this is huge. Oh, this is the range. Oh my gosh. Tell me I'm going to 269. I want to go to two. Shit. All right. Meaning, you see this blue line? You see how it's right here? You see that breakout? You see how it is? Look, we'll draw a line right here. So you can know that one only blue line I drew is the breakout. So that's going to be support. This is resistance to this side, to the candlesticks all the way here to the right. All the way to the right when I go back is going to be support, right? Watch, you'll see how it bounce and everything. So you can take this bad boy here and we'll go ahead and 50% retracement, that bad boy like that, like so. And I may grab another one just so you can see how it's gonna perform. Look, look how it's using the top of the 50 as a new support, right? So you got new 50s in here, right? This is, I love this stuff, bro. And it's just because it's all gonna relate to my support and resistance. Right. So boom, 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 boom. That's how I travel back up. Right. Um, and that's how it stood in there. And we'll see when it came and tested this range. And watch how it comes to that 50. Look, boom, trying to go back up or oh, over it. Look, staying on it. Let's keep going. Uh, Moody, make this smaller. I mean bigger. All right, there we go. Look at it. Look, 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 look how it comes straight to that 50. Watch how it stops there too. See that body close? See how it just played before? Oh, oh, pick them up. Boom. That's how good this stuff is and how real it is, right? Look, come down to the bottom of it, right? Because it was at the top. Boom. That's the whole range that is true. What the price action is truly playing. It's playing that big ass bar, right? So boom, comes back down. Look, comes right there. Remember that blue line that I said I drew? That that was going to be support? Remember that? It broke out and gave that big bar. Look at that. Look at that blue line right there. Look at that support. Boom. Look how I try to reclaim it. Boom. Came right back down. Took out liquidity, right? Moody, go ahead. Like, let's show, let's, let's show them. Might as well show off. Right. That's going to be a liquidity grab, right? Boom, boom. We play some new support right here. You're going to find that support all the way over there when I go back. Right. Boom. Coming back up, going to the 50. Oh, uh, not to the 50, but inside of the range, right? Look, at this is high probability. Bull flag, couple hands. Jesus Christ, high probability. Market opens up, boom, let's go, right? Staying on top of that. Staying on top of that comes right back down. It's okay. You see this nice PMG it just left us and it got another one right there. You just got to be able to see the chart, right? Now that we got that, boom, look, back to the support, right? This is this is the support that we, we deem. Everybody took that liquidity, so don't have no liquidity up there. Guess what? Look, boom, pre-market, market opens up right here. Bow, one candle takes them all out. 
PNG. All stop losses. Give me your money. Give me your money. Give me your money. Straight cleans the gap. Watch the watch the PNG right here. Right. Boom. Boom. Clean them up. Clean. Clean. Just left one wick up there. Clean. Came right back down. Why? That's the fifty percent retracement. That's also where it broke out at. Remember that. Right. So boom. Comes right back down. What does it keep doing? Coming back down to its support. Right. And breaking that support. So we know that we have different supports, and we know that this is the the month is the monthly or weekly or daily opening. I have to keep going to the right uh, to see, but you can see, look, boom, coming, coming straight to, to that support, breaking it, breaking it. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, that was support resistance. Boom. Breaks it straight through. Right. Why? Because we leave in nothing but higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. This one try to take them out. Couldn't. It rejected that resistance. And then it just creates more high low, high low, high low. All these are higher lows, right? Boom. They start, boom, couldn't take all them out. All right, cool. Give me another one right here with the high probability setup, right? Inverted head and shoulders, cup and handle, bull flag, buy. And then on top of it, that it gave you all that, the inverted head and shoulders and cup and handle, it gave you an inverted head and shoulders inside of here. Just try to see it. Inverted head and shoulders. Boom. Let's go. Cup and handle. Boom. Watch what this shit is going to do. I'm telling y'all. Pull up dominoes tomorrow and you're going to be like, holy shit. This motherfucker is not playing. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I think I think this was a dope class. I don't think. I know it was a dope class. Uh, do, 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 do. 